Hello everyone, welcome to the theory class. Today we're going to be covering lesson 19. So before we get started with that, let's go ahead and do our evaluation for lesson 18. See how you do, okay? All right, ready? Number one, wished. I wished upon a star, wished. Number two, played. We played a game. Played. Number three, thought. I thought about it before I made a decision. Number four, gold. He won gold at the Olympics. Number five, bald. He is bald. Number six, viewed. We viewed the show. Viewed. Okay, now the rest of these are going to be numbers. You're going to use your number bar. Okay, number seven is 87. Make sure you separate each number with a comma. Number eight is 30. Number nine is 20. And number 10 is 66. All right, let's take a look at those, see how you did. Okay, so I'm going to show you on my board here. I'm going to point to the way you should have written them. And if you wrote them any different, you know, any other way, then you need to uh, go back and review that. Okay, so number one is wished. W, short I, S-H in a second stroke, come back for final D. Number two, played, P-L, long A, in a second stroke, come back for final D. Number three, thought, T-H-A-U-G-T. Even though it's spelled O-U in the English language, it has an aw sound and it's spelled with a G-H-T. So normally if it's spelled with an O and has an aw sound, we keep it with the O, but the rule is if it has a G-H-T ending and has an aw sound, we use the A-U. Okay. Number four, gold, initial G, long O, L-D. Number five, bald, B-A-U-L-D. Number six, viewed, V. Long U in a second stroke, come back for final D. Number seven is 87. So you're going to strike the eight, lift up, strike the seven, lift up. And then you would strike your comma just to separate from the next number. Okay, number eight is 30, three zero, all in one stroke. Number nine is 20, two zero. Both of those are all in one stroke because it's possible. And number 10 is 66. You're going to strike six, lift up, strike six again, lift up. All right. So again, if you struggled with any of those, then I encourage you to go back and uh, review them before you start lesson 19. Okay. All right. So let's uh, look at 19.1. Again, if you have not printed out the handouts, you're going to want to print those out. So go ahead and pause this recording and print these out and then come back to the recording. All right, so today we are focusing on uh, word practice, word endings with G. So the final G um, happen to be words that end in I-N-G. So it's a lot like plural words where we come back for final Z no matter what. The ing words are the same exact concept. We come back for final G, no matter what. Even if it's possible to put it in the same stroke, 
we always come back for final G in a separate stroke if the word has an ing ending. And that's because of accuracy. We know if you purposely come back for final G, then you meant to hit that G. If you have a word like pilling, uh, P short I L G, if you hit that all in one stroke, there's a chance that maybe you didn't mean to hit that G. But if you come, if you hit pill and then in a second stroke come back for final G, you're going to know that you purposely did that. So it's going to help your accuracy. Okay, once you get into speeds, if you want to add the final G and in uh, words that um, are possible to do it all in one stroke, that's going to be up to you. But in theory, you want to make sure and uh, uh, come back for that second stroke. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and look at our words. The first word is lying, L long I, come back for final G. Seeing, S long E, come back for final G. Rowing, R long O, in a separate stroke, come back for final G. Coming, K-U-M, in a separate stroke, come back for final G. Again, that could be possible, but we always come back for final G, no matter what. Mashing, M-A-S-H, come back for final G. Steaming, S-T-A-E-M, come back for final G. And we use the A-E because it's an E-A word. Okay, wishing, W-I-S-H, come back for final G. Lining, L long I-N, come back for final G. Buying, B long I, come back for final G. Saying, S long A, come back for final G. Paying, P long A, come back for final G. Fishing, F-I-S-H, come back for final G. Then we have raining, rubbing, ribbing, stabbing, uh, bowing, as in like the king is bowing to the queen. Bow, that's an ow sound, so we're going to write that as B-O-U, bow, in a separate stroke, come back for final G. Suing, S long U, come back for final G. Uh, knowing, N long O, come back for final G. Tanning, T A N, come back for final G. Roaming, R long O M, come back for final G. Staining, S T long A N, come back for final G. Humming, H U M, come back for final G. Foaming, F long O M, come back for final G. Getting, G E T, come back for final G. Eating, again, that's an E A word, so we're going to use A E T, come back for final G. Now let's look at the next word. The next word is a little bit different, it's a little trippy, uh, tricky. Um, B, so we write B as our final B, right? That's how we write B. But we can't do B, G together because that would be our final K. And we always come back for final G for ING word. So we use our brief for B and we lift up and then strike the G for the ING and lift up. So it's going to look funny. Strike B, lift up, and then strike your G for the ING on B, okay? And that's exactly why we don't write those two at the same at the same time. And eventually, you're going to get words like milk, which it would be M I L, and then in the second stroke, you'd have to put, come back for final K. And um, if you use being as B G, it's it can could conflict. Okay, so if you want to, you can highlight that so you don't get it confused. Then we have railing. Howling, there's an owl word, so H-O-U-L, come back for final G. Howling, feeling, failing, ruling, that's a long U. Bailing, B long A-L, come back for final G. Uh, sailing, S long A-L, come back for final G. Fueling, F long U-L, come back for final G. Shouting. Again, that's an ow sound, so we use the O-U. Sealing, I am sealing the Ziploc baggies, S-A-E-L, 
come back for final G. And then, if you notice, next to that we have the ceiling that's at the top of, of our uh, wall there. Uh, the ceiling is leaking. Notice the difference between the two. That ceiling is S long E L, come back for final G. Um, so the first ceiling, like I am sealing the Ziploc baggies, that's an E-A word, so we're going to write that as S-A-E-L, come back for final G. And then the ceiling up here at the top of our wall would be S long E-L, come back for final G. So that's the difference between the two. Then we have oiling, oi. We've got the O-I-L, come back for final G, oiling. All right, looking on over at 19.2. And again, you guys, I'm just letting you know now, obviously there's a lot more words than what is listed here on this page, but we can't possibly list every word with that ends with or could end with an ing. So that's why this is just a little snapshot of, of uh, some of the words that end with ing to get, get the feeling, get the, you know, so you can get the hang of it. But you're going to hear a lot of other words in readback with this lesson and from now on, okay? So just remember, you come back for G for any word that has an ing ending. Now let's look. Let's see. We talked about uh, we talked about uh, our being. Now let's go ahead and go to nineteen point two, our sentence drill. Okay. All right. Um, line one. She is humming a new tune. Now notice that again, we're in theory one still, so all of our phrases are conveniently underlined for us. So if it's underlined, that means you need to phrase it. Tune is going to be a long U, okay? Um, next sentence, we should use copper tubing. Tubing is going to be a long U. Uh, is Ted manning the boat? Don't forget to flag Ted. It's a proper name that's one syllable. I hate washing the dishes. Wash is a broad A. We're going to write, write it as W-A-U-S-H, wash. His boss was fuming about it. That's a long U. She was lying down sobbing, period. Uh, line three, the critic gave it a panning. Now, I've had students in the past ask me, can we phrase it a, because it is possible, it a, but the problem is with that, we cannot phrase it. It conflicts with at that. When you get into speeds, um, pretty much in the early speeds, 60, 80, 100, you're going to learn different phrases, at that, at that time. And those are all um, at that is TA, at that time is TAT. We won't go into it too much right now because we don't want you to, you don't have to worry about it right now. We don't want you to worry about it right now, okay? But that's why we cannot phrase it A because it conflicts with at that, okay? So make yourself a little note there. Do not phrase. All right. Stop pushing and shoving, period. The sun is fading the carpet, period. I hate to do the packing, period. We can't phrase do the because it would conflict with dot. The matting has holes in it, period. Go on up in the rigging, period. Now, just a little reminder, the brief for on is O. It's not O-N. That would be like saying on not. On is just O. Okay. Ned is hugging his mom. Ned is going to be flagged because it's a one syllable proper name. Are you breaking the law in a rock? Law, L-A-U. The cats are hissing at the dog, period. Is he setting the pace in a rock? We are teaming up for the race, period. Stop jabbing at the coals, period. Use tanning oil in the sun, period. Oil, O-I-L. He is lashing the ropes down, period. He is roaming the halls, period. Now, don't forget, hall 
is going to be written as H A L because um, the other hall, let's haul away the load, would be H A U L. So, hall, let's walk down the hall, is just H A L. Okay, and then if we have the word how, we would flag it. The lake is teeming with fish, period. Sue is faking a headache, period. Sue is going to be flagged. Proper name that's one syllable. The hummingbird flew by. Now let's look at the word flew. Flew, F L E W, is going to be written as F L long U because we've got the word flew, as in I have the flu, F L U, which is written as F L U. All right, so the bird flew by is going to be a long U. Tom has a homing pigeon, period. Tom is going to be flagged. And uh, let's look at pigeon. Pigeon's going to be written as P I J, pige. Come back for O N. Pigeon. Okay. Are you coming here tonight in a rock? He is rubbing the wax finish, period. He is running a relay race, period. Are you mashing the potatoes in a rock? Now, there are actually four ways that you can write potatoes. The first way would be either P-O, come back for T, long A, T, come back for long O, come back for Z, or you can write it as P-O, come back for T, long A, come back for T, long O, come back for final Z. So that depends on how you, where you hear the, the T, either potato, O or potato, it's up to you. Or some people say potato. Um, I, you know, I personally say potato, but if you say potato, you would write it with a long O. So I've heard that some people from Idaho actually say potato. So if that's the case, then again, you're, you would just uh, have the two options of what I just showed you, except you would change it to a long O. Okay. All right, what is your batting like in a rock? Would you consider trading in a rock? She is making a lemon cake, period. The seat needs new backing, period. The dog is licking his hand, period. The house is facing the lake, period. Stop fussing about it, period. What size stocking is it in a rug? Where are you sitting tonight in a rug? I wish he would stop pacing, period. Don't forget, tonight is T O N T. That was a passing fad, period. Don't forget to phrase that was T H A, final F S. The old Couch is sagging, period. Um, let's see here. Consider raising the stakes, period. Pat is sticking to his ways, period. Pat is going to be flagged. Was he eating the peach pie in a rock? Why was she taking her time in a rock? Don't forget to phrase why was, why, final FS. Rob is getting a new car, period. Rob is going to be flagged. New is just N-U. Stop pacing up and down, period. Down, D-O-U-N. He is raking the leaves, period. Now, let's look at leaves. There's a difference between leaf and leave. Leaf, singular, is written as L-A-E-F. Leaves is going to be written as L-A-E, final V, and a second stroke, come back for final Z. Okay. All right. And looking over at 19.2, continued over on the next page. I've got a few more sentences with 19.2. Sentence drill continued. Let's look at these sentences. Are you stacking these suitcases in a rock suit cases? Suit is going to be a long U. 
John is bailing out, period. John is going to be flagged. She is peeling the peaches, period. What was the new ruling in Iraq? Don't forget to phrase what was, W-H-A, final F-S. What is your bowling score in Iraq? Bowling is a long O. The papers are piling up, period. Don't forget your brief for paper, P, long A, P, paper. He has been sailing this week, period. And then we have the ceiling is peeling, period. And that ceiling is going to be S long E L. Come back for final G. I am sealing the fruit, period. Fruit is a long U. And that ceiling is going to be S A E L. Come back for G in a separate stroke. Okay. All right. Moving on over to 19.5. Three. All right. We've got some briefs and phrases, some new briefs and phrases. Again, I really encourage you now to get an address book and add all of your briefs and phrases from starting from theory one because, as you notice, each new chapter or lesson comes with new briefs and phrases. So you are probably starting to feel overloaded with briefs and phrases and it's very easy to forget. So what you need to do is get an address book and go through the alphabet with all of your, go through your lessons and if it's the word after, you're gonna go to A and write after and put in the word and what the, the, the steno uh, brief is for that. Okay, and go through all of your briefs and phrases. That way, before you even start each day on your machine, I would flip through your address book and go through A to Z and practice all your briefs and phrases. That's a great way to warm up along with your stitching and initials and everything else. Okay, so make sure you do that. It's a great, great way to warm up. All right, so 19.3, new briefs and phrases. Let's look at some of these. The first word is even. Um, even, I can do that. Even is going to be written as long E-N. Even. Evening. It's a great evening. Long E-N-G. Evening. Morning. Morning is M-O-R-N-G. All in one stroke. It's a brief. Short O, not a long O. Particular. P L final R particular police car P L A R plar recognize R O G possible P O B L finance F N S had students ask me why can't we throw in the I because it would be fins. Finance, F-N-S, without the I. Financial, F-N-L, financial. Convenient is going to be initial V, long E-N. Veen, convenience, initial V, long E-N-S. Veets. And then we have upon, upon is P-O-N. So again, you want to know these briefs so, so well that when you hear them, you write them as soon as you hear them. You're not hesitating. That's the goal. So when you hear it, you just know initial T, the final T is initial S. And you want to you wanna know them that quickly. Um, and you want to do that starting from lesson one all the way through 19. Okay? And so on. And per, you know, as we progress through the, the lessons, you want to... You want to know every single brief just as well as you know them back in lesson one. Okay. All right. So 19.3 is pretty much all of our new briefs. 19.4 is a brief drill. Okay. We've got a brief drill here. Um, so basically it's covering all of our new briefs. And again, just separate each one with a comma so that it makes it easier to go back and read when you're looking over your homework. 19.4. Let's look at 19.5. We've got practice sentences using all of these new briefs. Okay. Um, 
Again, if it helps you, if you're not still not real comfortable with them, you can go right above the new brief and write it in steno. So the first sentence says, pay even a wee bit. So if you're not sure, you know, if it's hard for you to remember even, right above it, write A-O-E-N. And that way when you're going through, it's like, oh, okay, there's even, long E, N, okay, and so on. Okay, so we have um, sentences here, pay even a wee bit. Even a letter would be nice. Give him even a crumb. Now, even though crumb has a B on there, it's a silent B. So that would be written as K-R-U-M, crumb. Okay. We stock many convenience foods, period. Don't forget many. I brief for many spinal PL. Okay. Uh, it is made for convenience. Meet me at your convenience. The convenience made it convenient to decide on what to do. Now, don't forget, decide is going to be written as D long E. Otherwise, it would look like did he. So long E for decide. Okay, line four, Paul is very particular. Paul is going to be flagged because it's a proper name that's one syllable. I want that particular one. Now, with the word want, you have the choice to either write it as uh, W-A-U-N-T, the ah sound, or you can write it like it's spelled W-A-N-T. All right, that's up to you. Did you pick that particular day? When will it be possible? We saw four possible ways. Now let's go back to the first uh, sentence in line five. When will it be possible? So you can phrase when will, W-H final L, and then it be, initial T final B. Okay, when will it be convenient? It is not convenient. Monday is a convenient time. We are depending upon you. The company can depend upon him. He is calling upon his boss to help. Now, calling, call is going to be K-A-U-L, it's a broad A. They can depend upon her to teach the finance, financial class. I recognize that it is necessary. Did she recognize Kevin? I hope she will recognize him. Make financial plans now. Control the financial matters. The house was a financial loss. The evening was very humid. Humid is going to be a long U. Humid. I shall see her this evening. It is not convenient this evening. He had to finance the house. The finance company needs help. It is convenient, convenient to finance the... I'm sorry. Is it convenient to finance the purchase? That particular financial loan has to be financed. And has, it's going to be H-A-Z, not, not with an S. It's not has, it's has. Is it possible to recognize him? Financial gain is not possible. Give me that particular one. Did you recognize the letter? It is not even possible. It caused a financial mess. Call me in the morning. The morning sun is bright. I saw the police car. Now let's go back to call. Call me in the morning. Call is going to be a broad A. K-A-U-L. Call. Did you see that particular police car? Did you pass the police car? All right, looking on over at 19.6. These are called derivatives of abbreviations. Okay, so basically, to form the derivative of a, of a brief, add the prefix or suffix to the brief. That's basically what a derivative is. The prefixes and suffixes may stand as separate strokes. So let's look at some of these. We've got Helpful. So we have the brief help, which is H-E-P. 
full, come back for final FL. Unopened, so we're going to write it as UN. The brief for opened is long OP, and then come back for final D. Unsatisfied, UN, and then we've got the brief for satisfy, SAF, come back for final D. Inconsiderate, IN, and then we have the brief for consider, initial K, final R, come back for AT. It's a short A. It's not in, it's not, we don't pronounce it as inconsider eight. So it's a short A, not a long A. Okay, then we have letters. We have the brief letter, L-E-R, and then come back for final Z. Suggesting, the brief for suggest is S-U-G, come back for final Z. I'm sorry, come back for final G. Suggesting. Ordered, O-R-D, come back for final D. Purchased. P-U-R, come back for final D. Impossible, I-M, and then we have our brief for possible, P-O-B-L. Advertising, T-I-Z, come back for final G. Accounting, account is final K-T, come back for final G. Remembered, R-E-B, come back for final D. Correspondent, let's see here. Correspondent is K-O-R-N-T. Now that really is just a brief. So we really, I don't really consider that a derivative, um, but they're probably getting that because of correspond. Um, so that's why it's in there, okay? But we know what correspondent is, K-O-R-N-T, coming from the word correspond. All right, unnecessary, U-N, and then the brief for necessary, N-E-S. Acknowledged, A-K, knowledge, N-O-L, come back for final D. Companies, and our brief for company is initial K, final P, come back for final Z. All right. Now, looking at the next section, 19.7, we've got practice sentences, and these focus on our derivatives. The company acknowledged it. It was a satisfying meal. He remembers to put it out. I've had students ask me before, can we phrase it out? And the answer is no, not in theory, because it looks too much like a word. Tout, T-O-U-T. So um, in theory, please don't phrase that. Now, when you get into speeds, if you don't get confused with that, then go for it. But in theory, do not phrase it, okay? All right. I am asking you to save time, period. Now, we can phrase I am, but we have to flag it so it doesn't conflict with words like immortal, impossible, and things like that. So we can phrase I am, but we are going to flag it. So that's going to be written as I am with the flag. Okay, pretty easy stroke. We acknowledge the order. Joe is good at remembering. Joe is going to be flagged because it's one syllable proper name. They are impossible to read, period. It is an unadvertised sale, period. Now sale, S-A-L-E, is flagged. Are you ordering more pencils in a rock? The accountant filed the papers, period, paper. Don't forget your free for paper, pape. I have a new correspondent, period. The company has more. More is going to be a long O. Uh, purchasing power. Now let's, let's do a little review on power. Power is going to be P-O-U-R. Uh, pour, as in pour me a drink, would be P long O O P long O R. The pour in your skin would be P long O R with the flag. Okay, and then power again is P O U R. Then pour, as in the family is poor, would be P A O R because it's spelled O O. So we use the A O for O O. It helps to look at the source. Extra help is unnecessary. Start saving your receipts. 
what is your advertising budget? Line nine, he is to do all the purchasing. Now, you do want to phrase all the, A-U-L-T. The company advertised in the paper. The sign needs new lettering. The ordering should be done Monday. The new book is very helpful. I see them on Sundays. Again, don't forget your brief for on is O. The package is unopened. He is refinancing the house. Looking on over at 19.8. Single letters and initials. All right. So this is where our new, our new uh, letters and initials come in. Now, just a little review. We've already learned how to do what we call stitching. So if I were to say my name is Jill, J-I-L-L, -L, we learned how to stitch J-I-L-L, -L, right? So now this is going to focus on single letters and initials. So if I were to say my name is Jill R. Brummond, we have to have a way to tell our software we're talking about a middle initial or sometimes people have a first name which are uh, initials like JP or JR or JJ, so and so forth. So we have to tell our software we're talking about initials. Another type of initial is uh, if you were to say, I work for AT&T or I go to UCLA, we have to tell our software we're talking about an initial or single letters. So the way we do that is by taking our letter that we're talking about and striking that letter with the RBGS at the same time. It's very much like taking our letter and striking the asterisks at the same time, except we're using the RBGS. So this 19.8 uh, is going through the whole alphabet using the same letters that you already used for stitching. Okay, so it's going to be the same format except you're using RBGS. So watch what I do. A, B, notice I'm hitting the letter and the RBGS at the same time. C, D, uh, E, E here, F, G, H, I, notice it's a long I, and I will explain why it's a long I as soon as we're done here. Uh, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, now the reason why I've had students ask me why do we have to do a long I? The reason being is because when you get into theory two, you're going to learn the light board. And the way that we um, identify the second defense attorney, which doesn't happen very often, but when you get out in the working field, many times you will, you will see two or more defense attorneys. Uh, so if somebody is suing someone, and let's say there's a car accident, and uh, I caused the accident. I may have hit two people. So if I hit two people, those two people may be coming after me. Um, and maybe there is another person that caused the accident, myself and someone else. Those two people may be coming after myself and somebody else because we both caused the accident. So we would both need a defense attorney. So that's why you would see more than two attorneys. So. Um, I don't want to go into it too much right now because you don't need to know that yet. We're going to talk about the light board once you get into theory two. But um, when you go to identify defense, uh, the defense two, two attorney, the way we, we identify him is by striking the short I RBGS. So because of that, that's why we use a long I when we stitch, um, or excuse me, when we use the single letters and initials. We use a long I with the RBGS. Or when we stitch, we use long I with the asterisk, and that's why, okay? So we will go into all of the light board and the attorneys when you learn how to identify the light board, uh, the speakers on the light board, but we're not gonna worry about that now. But I do like to explain it a little bit because I do get that question a lot. Why do we have to use a long I? And there is a reason. All right, so let's just um, go over some of these letters that we don't really hear as often. The C is going to be your KR. 
That's how we write our C. Make sure you get that middle finger up because if you brush it on the P, it's going to look like K P R. You don't want that. A R. So you're going to hit the K R with the R B G S. That's our C. Again, our I is going to be a long I when we stitch or when we use the um, you know, RBGS for the single letters and initials. The Q is going to be the KW. It kind of, if you look at this, KW kind of sounds like Q. So Q, okay. Uh, the V is going to be the SR. The X is KP. And the way I always learned how uh, to write the X is I thought about an X is pretty much, you know, a crisscross. So we're kind of doing that with our two fingers here on the X. And the Z is going to be the SD together. That's how we write our Z. Okay, so you're going to go through. You're going to strike the ARBGS. And you don't have to separate each one uh, with a comma because it, it'll get too confusing. You're already using your comma. So just go through your alphabet. A, B, C, D, E. F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And you want to get that comfortable with it. That's the goal. You want to do that with stitching and with single letters and initials. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and look at 19.9. Uh, letter and initial practice. Okay, so for the sake of this drill, we're going to separate each set of letters with a period because we're already using our comma, so it's too hard to read due to using the comma with the alphabet. So in, for the sake of this drill, we're gonna separate each, you know, each section with a, a period. So let's look at the first one. It says AAA, which you see that with AAA, right? So the way that you would write that, if you were to say, I work for the AAA company, um, you would strike that as ARBGS, ARBGS, ARBGS. Then strike your period. Just to, that way when you go back to read it, you're going to know when this ends and when the next one starts. Okay? All right, A, B, A. So you're going to go, you're going to write A, RBGS, B, RBGS, A, RBGS period. Okay. A, B, C. A, B, C. Period. A, C, L, U. A, C, L, U. Period. And you're going to go across to, through each one on each line. Start from the left, work your way over to the right. Okay. All right, and then if you look over on the next page, 19.9, you're going to see more of the letter and initial practices. Um, they continue over onto another page, which gives you a lot of practice. Now, again, it's very important that you get these down because, again, you're going to hear these um, whenever somebody refers to a radio station or a particular school. Um, all types of things, companies, um, you know, anything that has uh, an initial letter in it, like IRS, um, what is your IQ, the DA uh, questioned me, um, I work for CBS, uh, uh, let's see here. I am the CEO of the company. I have my BA. I mean, there's just so many different examples. So anytime you hear anything with an initial, you're going to use your RBGS. All of the letters will be used on the initial side of the keyboard. And then, of course, your vowels are down here at the bottom. Okay. Now, I do want to let you know, um, because I, I know this is a huge question that comes up often from students. Sometimes students will say to me, how, how do you know if a business name has periods in them or not? Because some do, some don't. You know, I work for APU. That one does not. But it doesn't really matter on our machine. We write it the same way. 
So whether or not it has periods or not, it doesn't matter, which is very nice. You don't have to think about it. And it, it makes sense. Once you get into speeds and you're, you're timed on everything, you're not going to have time to sit there and think to yourself, does that have periods or, or not in that uh, initial uh, letter? Does that have a period or not? We don't know half the time. So we're going to write it the same way. So if I say I, I went to APU, I'm going to write the same way. A P U. Okay. Or send it to the PO box. P, it might be P period O period, but we're still writing it the same way. P O. Okay. Then the way that you would either add periods or not add periods is when you go into the edit mode and you would do this only if it were a test in school or out in the working field. When you go to edit your work, clean it up, make it, you know, you're turning it into a transcript. Um, that's where you would go and add your period. So if it's a test in school, then once you get into speeds or even a theory test, after the test is over, uh, your instructor will give you what's called a word list, kind of like what I do with every test that we have. I'll say, okay, you're, you heard the word Tim, and that's T-I-M. I'm going to give you the word list. If I say, okay, I, I said uh, APU, capital A, capital P, capital U, no periods. So you're going to write that down. So then in that case, you wouldn't have to add periods. But if I were to say, okay, I said P.O. box and there are periods, then you would write that down. Capital P period, capital O period. So that's how you're going to know. But as you're writing it on your machine, it doesn't really matter. It won't matter until you go in to the edit mode. And that's when it matters. Because if you don't put periods and there are, then that will be minus one. So it's important that you do go in and add the periods if it's necessary. Okay. All right, moving on to 19.10. We've got names, middle initials, and spellings. So this one's going to be a little tricky. You may want to go through it and uh, practice before you actually do the homework part of it. Okay, so you're going to see lots of different, uh, lots of different concepts here. Pam A. Morse, comma, M-O-R-S-E. So you've got some initials and some stitching. So let's look at this. Pam, first of all, you got to follow the rule. If it's a proper name, which it is, if it's one syllable, we have to flag it. So I'm writing this as P-A-M with a flag, Pam. Then her middle initials A. We're going to strike A period. I'm sorry, A comma, A-R-B-G-S at the same time. A, Morse, M long O-R-S, M long O-R-S, and then we're going to have to do what we call tapping and long ORS. All my fingers are taken up. So I'm going to lift up and hit this asterisk and then lift up. Even though Morse is not typically a, another name, it doesn't matter. It's a proper name that's one syllable, so we're going to flag it. Then notice that there is a little comma there. You're going to strike the comma because it's there. Okay, so you're going to strike your comma. Then you're going to stitch. Notice it has M-O-R-S-E. There's our stitching, M-O-R-S-E. Now, at the end of that, you're going to strike your period because the period's just going to help you to know that that name is completely done and finished. And we're moving on to the next name. Okay, let's look at the next name. And again, you're writing all of these phonetically. Okay, now if this were a test, you would have to go in and change the way that you wrote it. So once I give it to you on the word list, you would go in and you would actually change it to the correct spelling. Or if it's stitched, now if it's stitched for you, then I will not give you the spelling. So in that case, this first name here, I would give you Pam because that's not spelled, but Morse, M-O-R-S-E, I spelled that for you, so I'm not gonna give you the spelling because I stitched it for you. Okay, so then you would go in and make sure that Morse, is you're going to change that if it doesn't convert if your software still doesn't recognize it you would go in and change that steno to m o r s e because i gave you the spelling and you're going to keep the stitching as well so you would have a comma there and then capital m hyphen lowercase o hyphen lowercase r hyphen lowercase s hyphen lowercase e okay that's how you would do that all right so let's look at the second uh, name c robert wright so C is going to be our initial, C, R, B, G, S, Robert, 
Rob Ertz. You don't have to flag it because it's two syllables. Now, let's look at right. Now, right. When you hear right, it could be R I G H T, it could be W R I G H T. We don't really know. So that is up to you. If you hear right, you will have the choice to either write it as W R long I G T, lift up, come over here and hit your asterisk and lift up because it's one syllable. Or if you're not sure if it's W R, you can just write it phonetically R long I G T, lift up, come over here and hit your asterisk, lift up. Then strike your comma because there's a comma there. And then you're going to stitch W R W R I G H T, period. Now, then in this case, if I were to hit right, when I wrote out right, I wasn't sure if it's W R or R. So let's say I hit, I hit R long I G T, right? And it doesn't come up. Then I would go back, if this were a test in the edit mode and change it to W-R-I-G-H-T, the correct spelling, if my software doesn't recognize it, which your software will not recognize a lot of proper names. So don't panic and think that you made a mistake. Uh, you re just remember you have a limited dictionary, okay? So then you're gonna go down, all the way down through all these uh, uh, names. B-Z Morton, so again, B, Z Morton M long, long O R and then I would come back for T O N. Okay, comma M O R T O N. Mark E Adams, comma A D A M S. So again, Mark would be flagged because it's one syllable, but you're gonna have to lift up. Do the tapping, come over here and tap and lift up. Mark E. So you're gonna strike your E R B G S Adams A D. Come back for A M S Adams. Okay. Let's talk about another um, important question that I get with names. Proper names are not considered plural just because they have an S at the end. For instance, Adams. At the S is part of the name Adams, kind of like James. J, the S is part of the, the name James. So we don't consider that a plural name. So we don't, that, that means we don't have to come back for final Z. Adams would just be A-D, come back, come back for A-M-S, Adams. And you would either use your S or your Z depending on if you hear the S or the Z, depending on what you hear, okay? All right, so the rest are pretty much, you know, everything I've talked about, you're gonna do, you know, if it's an initial, you're going to use your RBGS. If it's a name, you're writing it phonetically. If it's one syllable, you're going to flag it. Um, again, looking on line eight, BD Anders. You might hear Anders. You might hear Anders. It depends on what you hear. So I would either write that as A-N, come back for D-E-R-S, or A-N, come back for D-E-R-Z, depending on if I hear the S or the Z. Anders, Anders. Okay. All right. Again, let's look at line nine. L. K. Griffin. Now, Griffin, you may think it's G. R. I. F. F. I. N. And if you do, it's okay because you're writing it phonetically. So even though it's an E. N. So if I write it as Griffin, G. R. I. F. Come back for I-N because I didn't really know it was E-N. That's okay. It's phonetic because then I'm going to give you the spelling, G-R-I-F-F-E-N. If that were a test, you would go in and change your steno to the actual correct spelling, leaving the stitching. You always leave the stitching. If somebody says, my name is Jill, J-I-L-L, -L, you never take that stitching out, even though you correct the the steno to the correct spelling when you when you're producing a transcript if they stitch or spell a name you leave the stitching in there because it shows that they spelled it out don't ever delete that part a lot of people want to delete it and you, that's not that's not acceptable okay all right so you let me know if you have any questions with those names middle initials and spellings okay looking on over at 19.11 our last section in this chapter. Um, let's look at line one, 
an EKG was ordered. Again, EKG, I'm gonna write it as EKG was ordered. Mail it to APO43, APO. So just remember, if it's an initial, you're gonna use your RBGS. If it's stitching, and some of these sentences have stitching, if you see the dashes, you know it's stitched. His name is Nixon, N-I-X-O-N. If you see the dashes, you know you're, you're stitching. N-I-X-O-N, okay? So just take your time with these, and then it's really important that you go back and read your notes after you finish the lesson and make any corrections so that you can catch those errors so you don't continue to make the same errors over and over again. Okay, and then after each sentence, you're either going to use a period or the um, interrog, depending on what the sentence has. Some of these just have like a name. Like if you notice in line 14, excuse me, line 14, the second sentence over says Cotter, comma, C-O-T-T-E-R, period. So you're just going to write Cotter, and then C-O-T-T-E-R, and then period. All right, or I didn't say the comma, but make sure you put your comma in there. If you see a comma, you're going to strike a comma. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, let me know. It's very similar to stitching. Okay, so 1911 is the last section of this, uh, this lesson. And then once you feel like you have, have this down, you want to do it at least three times, especially this lesson. It's more difficult than most. Then you're going to go back and uh, make sure you do it three times. Go back and look it over. And then you will uh, go into the readback portion of this class. Listen to the readback sentences. If you have a hard time, listen to it again. It doesn't matter how many times you have to do it. You don't want to move on until you feel completely comfortable with it. Okay, so that concludes our lesson 19. And we will see you soon. Have a great day.